a person who, during the evil age of the latter day of the law, believes in the teachings of the Lotus Sutra just as they are set forth in the Sutra how does the mirror of T. Lotus Sutra portray him? Shakyamuni Buddha has left us words from his golden mouth revealing that such a person has already served tens of billions of Buddhas in his past existences. But common mortals in the latter day might well doubt the words spoken by one Buddha only. With this thought in mind, Taho Buddha expressly came all the way from his world of treasure purity, many lands to the east. Facing Shakyamuni Buddha, he gave his words of testimony, saying, All that you have expounded is the truth, if this is so, then there can be no room for doubt about the matter. Nevertheless, the Buddha may have felt that common mortals in the latter day of the law would still be skeptical. Hence he summoned all the Buddhas throughout the ten directions to come and join him in the magnificent act of extending their long broad tongues, which had told nothing but the truth for countless eons, until they projected into the sky as high as Mount Sumeru. Since this is the case, when a common mortal in the latter day believes in even one or two words of the Lotus Sutra, he is embracing the teaching to which all the Buddhas in the ten directions have given credence. I wonder what good karma I created in the past to have been born as such a person, and I am filled with joy. Shakyamuni's words which I have mentioned above indicate that the blessings that come from having served tens of billions of Buddhas are so great that, even though one may have believed in teachings other than the Lotus Sutra and as a result of this slander been born poor and lowly, he is still able to believe in this sutra during this lifetime. Miao Lo states, one who falls to the ground rises by pushing himself up from the ground, those who slander the Lotus Sutra will fall to the ground of the three evil paths, humanity or heaven, yet through the help of the Lotus Sutra they will in the end attain Buddhahood. Now since you, Ueno Shichiro Jiro, are a common mortal in the latter day of the law and were born into a warrior family, you should by rights be called an evil man, and yet your heart is that of a good man. I say this for a reason. Everyone, from the ruler on down to the common people, refuses to take faith in my teachings. They inflict harm on the few who do embrace them, heavily taxing or confiscating their estates and fields or even in some cases putting them to death. So it is a difficult thing to believe in my teachings, and yet both your mother and your deceased father dared to accept them. Now you have succeeded your father as his heir and, without any persuasion from others, you too have wholeheartedly embraced these teachings. Many people, both high and low in rank, have reprimanded or threatened you, but you have refused to give up your faith. Now that you appear certain to attain Buddhahood, the devil of the sixth heaven and other demons are trying to use this illness to intimidate you. But remember that life in this world is limited. Never allow yourself to be intimidated and as for you demons will you cause this disciple of mine to suffer and swallow a sword point first, or embrace a raging fire, or become the archenemy of all the Buddhas throughout the universe and in the three existences of life. How terrible this will be for you. Now, will you cure this man's illness immediately and hereafter give him your protection instead, in this way escaping from the grievous sufferings that are the lot of demons? Or do you prefer to have your heads broken into seven pieces for and after your death to fall into the hell of incessant suffering? Bear what I say in mind and do not forget, if you ignore my words, you will regret it later. The 28th day of the second month in the fifth year of Koan, 1282. Background. This letter was sent through Niko Shonen to Nanjo Tokimitsu, Nanjo Shichirojuro, on February 28, 1282, when Nichiren Daishonin's death was drawing near. On October 13 of the same year, his great and turbulent life came to an end. This is one of several letters that the Daishonin sent to his beloved disciples in his last year. He had said in a letter to Tokimitsu's mother toward the end of the preceding year, Due to my decline in health I have refrained from replying to those who sent me letters. As revealed in this letter, however, his profound compassion and consideration for his disciples did not waver in the least. Despite his poor health, the Daishonin took up his writing brush to encourage Tokimitsu so that the latter could overcome his illness. 
This shows how dedicated Tokimitsu was to the cause of Buddhism and how highly the Daishonin valued him. Nanjo Tokimitsu was born in 1259 and, young as he was, had already shouldered his deceased father's responsibilities long before the time he received this letter. He was lord of an area called Ueno which covered a vast slope of Mount Fuji including the present compound of Teizeki-ji, the head temple of Nichiren Shosha. A follower of the Daishonin since childhood, Tokimitsu was one of the leading lay believers in the Fuji area. Especially during the Atsuhara persecution, at consider able risk to himself, he exerted his influence to protect believers in the Fuji area. For these actions, the Daishonin honored him with the title, Sage of Ueno, although he was just 21. He and his wife Myron consistently made offerings to the Daishonin, even while struggling to raise several children and enduring a burden of heavy taxes imposed on them by authorities who disapproved of their religious convictions. In this letter, Nichiren Daishonin encouraged the 24-year-old Tokimitsu to overcome his illness. Tokimitsu in fact recovered and lived a long life, and even after the Daishonin's death he served Niko Shonin and donated to him the land upon which Teizeki-ji temple now stands. He died in 1332. The letter is traditionally called, The Proof of the Lotus Sutra, for it mentions that all Buddhas gave credence to the truth of the Lotus Sutra. However, it is also called, On Life and Death, since Tokimitsu was then battling a serious illness. In the letter Nichiren Daishonin assured Tokimitsu he would attain enlightenment because he continued to uphold the Lotus Sutra, Gohanzen, in the face of oppression from the government. All the Buddhas in the universe agree that the believers of the Sutra are sure to attain Buddhahood. He stated that because Tokimitsu appeared certain to attain enlightenment, devils and demons would desperately try to impede him. The Daishonin himself strongly enjoined them to stop harassing his beloved disciple.